Hello everyone! We are here with uh, Rada uh, Ibrahim. Rada started freelancing at the age 13 and she has been digital nomad for 7 years, which is pretty impressive and today she will share her rich experience uh, with us. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where are you from uh, and what do you do for a living right now? Okay, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm 26 years old. I am half Pakistani, half Egyptian. I've been living in Turkey for seven years now, and I work as a digital marketer and creative lead. So following the intro statement, how did you decide on this lifestyle so young, and uh, what attracted you the most to it? Well, um, I didn't really have much of a choice because I had to pay for my own school since, uh, since I was really young. So I realized that um, you can hide your age online and get a lot of projects. In how many countries uh, have you been so far and what has been your favorite country? Considering you have been in so many, can you pick uh, one? If you can one, you can try top three. Well, I haven't really. I don't think I've traveled quite as much as I would like to. Mm -hmm. I've been to Turkey, I've been to England, Wales, and now Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mm -hmm. And I used to think that England was my favorite because I loved London when I went there uh, two mm -hmm. years ago. Um, but now I think I have a new favorite. Do you have, and if you do, uh, what's your favorite off the radar normal location that will likely be a hot spot in a few years? Well, because I haven't been to all the places that are on my checklist mm -hmm. so far, um, I have experienced being a digital nomad in Pakistan, in Turkey, and now over here. Mm -hmm. And I think the amenities and the facilities that are provided to digital nomads in Bosnia and Herzegovina are better than Turkey and Pakistan for sure. Yeah. Um, so while I'm not very um, knowledgeable about hotspots for digital nomads around the world, I do think mm -hmm. that this particular region has a lot of potential. Digital nomadism is a way of living that requires high levels of discipline and self-discipline. And with that, can you share with us how do you uh, balance uh, between uh, traveling and working uh, duties? Well, um, I do agree it requires very high levels of self-discipline and I didn't realize that at first, maybe because I started at a really young age, mm -hmm. but recently I um, had a few friends who really wanted to join this freelancer digital nomad mm -hmm. lifestyle and I did help them to get started, but once they started, they would never get the work done. Yeah. They lost all of their clients and they kept saying we can only work in an office if there is someone that we know is waiting at the end of the day that we finish mm -hmm. the project. But I think for me, um, there were some points where it was a choice between getting the work done or being homeless. Getting the work done or not continuing your school. I think that helped me a lot in getting that level of self-discipline and even mm -hmm. though I don't have those kinds of pressures on me anymore, I'm a lot more comfortable than I used to be about five, six years ago, mm -hmm. I feel like I still carried that with me forward. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that in order to be able to enjoy life to a certain level, to give myself the lifestyle that I love, yeah. I'm going to need to do certain things. Yeah, so yeah. the balance that I find is um, I do give myself certain boundaries, for example, um, I don't party during the weekdays. It doesn't matter what's happening. Mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, I'm not going out at night. Yeah, that's a good rule. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then on the weekends, I can do everything. Mostly I travel on the weekends. So I reserve like the having fun, traveling on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And then Monday to Friday, I will finish the maximum amount of work I possibly can. I have to ask you about the downsides about being a digital nomad as well. Uh, what is the hardest part or what is the most mentally challenging part for you? For example, sometimes uh, that, do you consider joining the majority and getting an office job, uh, which means travel less, be less free in life? Um, I do agree that um, it does come in with its challenges and I think one of the things that bothered me the most when I first started out was how lonely it could get. Yeah. Because when you go to an office, when you see the same people every day, and also like the way our education system is moduled, you move from going to class every day for eight hours and then you mm -hmm. move to an office working every day for eight yeah, hours. Yeah. So a lot of people just shift like from one social sphere to another. So mm -hmm. instead of having school buddies, you have work buddies. Mm -hmm. So I think that for me, like when I graduated and left school and all of my friends were, you know, in their offices, they had their work buddies, work hangouts. I didn't have that. And I think mm -hmm. that for me was a big shock at first. 
Mm -hmm. And um, initially I did think that maybe I should do an office-based job because while I was studying and juggling multiple jobs, it mm -hmm. was very stressful. It turns out I I found out that that's not my cup of tea. Like I really like deciding my own vibe every day. I want to, yeah. if I want to work from a coffee shop, it's the I freedom can do that. Right. It is absolutely. Mm -hmm. If I want to work, if it's something really serious that I need to, you know, get in a certain uh, state of mind for, I can go to a co-working space. Mm -hmm. The opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, what is the absolute best part about being a digital nomad for you? I think it's the fact that I can take on as many projects as I want. I'm not limited by contract with mm -hmm. anyone that I cannot work with your competitor. I definitely can. Mm -hmm. So I think I just decide how much I want to make every month. Yeah. That for me is the best part. If I have a specific job, I have to wait on a promotion, I have to wait on a raise. Mm -hmm. While being a digital nomad and a freelancer, I want if if I feel like, you know, I don't think I made enough money last month, I want more. I can just do that. Yeah, do, are you workaholic? A I little feel bit. Like a little are. bit, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. then again, if you meet me on the weekends, you'd probably think I'm a partyholic. It's the balance. It that is, is the, the balance. most important. Awesome. Okay, uh, so now let's talk a little bit about your current location. Mosta, Bosnia and Herzegovina. How do you like it so far? Are you enjoying your time here? I absolutely love my time here. Um, I'm a very, uh, I, I think there are different types of travelers. Um, there's some people who travel for fun, some people who travel for natural beauty, for history, architecture, different mm -hmm. things. I love traveling for nature and I think that there is so much natural beauty in this country, specifically yeah. in Mostar. And mm -hmm. the fact that there's just so much water, mm -hmm. I love the water and the fact that I can just see it every day, just go sit beside it, is, yeah. it's just making my mental health so much better than living in a city. Uh, what is something that you will remember dearly about this place or something that will stay with you for a long time? I think it's the way I've been treated by everyone I've met here. Because of my background, um, that is mixed, I'm half Egyptian, half Pakistani, and then I mm -hmm. went to Turkey, I always feel like a foreigner everywhere I go. So I'm too Arab for the Pakistanis, too Pakistani yeah. for the Arabs, a complete foreigner for the Turks. Mm -hmm. But when I came here, I didn't feel for a single minute that I was someone else. Everyone I've met, everyone I've interacted with has been very welcoming and very... Like that just never came up as a topic of discussion, like where are you from and yeah, what are you doing here? So I think that very welcoming, comfortable, safe environment is something that's going to stay with me for a very long time. What is, in your opinion, something unique uh, about this place that we can use as our advantage? I think uh, something I noticed is how affordable it is. Coming from Turkey, which is considered one of the biggest hotspots for like European travel, but mm -hmm. also like on a budget, because you have it, you have Istanbul both in Europe and Asia, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of people who want to experience like a European type of vacation, but on a budget they end up in Turkey. Yeah. yeah. But I think the affordability of Bosnia Herzegovina is better than Turkey, and mm -hmm. it is in Europe. Yeah. So I feel like if we were to look at it from that lens, that is something you could really cash in on. Especially if you're trying to attract people from other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think the locals realize that if you compare um, costs of this region with other places, this place is really affordable. So, is there anything that you don't like that we can improve about this place? I wouldn't say there's anything I don't like, but I do think there's a lot of areas with room for improvement. Because every time I travel places, I like to you know do my research for it. And I didn't find much for Bosnia Herzegovina, and it's only after I came here that I started mm -hmm. asking the locals, and I got more information. So I think that just having a digital footprint, irrespective of whether you're having nomads coming in or not, like let the world know about this place. Yeah. Just put things up on the internet because that's the easiest way to get knowledge. From your seven years of experience, uh, care to share some tips and tricks for the new digital nomads? And if there is some, what kind of digital nomads communities would you recommend them to join? I think that one of the most important things to do is to uh, get that balance you were talking about. Because it's yeah. very easy to move to a new country and be so overwhelmed by you know the different choices. You want to go out, you want to see different places, mm -hmm. you want to have fun. You're thinking that you know I'm going to leave in like two weeks, so I, I, I want to have as much fun mm -hmm. as possible. 
but so it's important to have some kind of self restraint in that respect, mm -hmm. where you still prioritize your work, but also make sure you don't miss out on anything. Um, regarding communities, I don't think um, I am part of any digital communities as such yet. Mm -hmm. But I think what I have found to be really helpful is to join local communities wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of expat groups on Facebook, um, on different parts of the internet, and some of them are like, to, like down to the city. So in Turkey we have expat groups for like Ankara, for Istanbul, for Fethiye, for different areas. And I think if you want to travel to some place as a digital nomad, because that's very different from a tourist, yeah. Um, you need to join these groups so that the locals can help you, you know, experience mm -hmm. things on a level that the average tourist would not. Lastly, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but where do you see the digital nomad lifestyle in about 10 years? And yourself, how far you have come? Do you still live as digital nomad? I think the digital nomad lifestyle um, still has a long way to go. Specifically after COVID, where a lot of people started realizing that the office-based jobs are not fun, they're not it. Yeah. And um, I know that in Europe and in uh, the West, the US, they're trying to shut down the work from home situation. A lot of big companies just laying mm -hmm. people off. But I think that the, the entire pandemic has given people the understanding and the idea that they do have way more autonomy than they thought they did. Because like mm -hmm. I said, you go from school to work and it's mm -hmm. just like a lifestyle you get used to. But when COVID happened and it disrupted all of that, a lot of people have started thinking outside of that box. So I do think that there is a lot of room for growth when it comes to digital mm -hmm. nomadism. And would I do it? Yes, absolutely. I would continue doing it. Mm -hmm. I think once you get used to that level of freedom, it's very difficult to allow yourself to be governed or restricted by someone else's timetable mm -hmm. or someone else's schedule. Thank you for your time. Thank it was you great having, having you here. And good luck on finding your next location and hope to see you again here soon. Thank you so much.